Mr. Zainuddin Nordin asked about the improvements to the quality of preschool education, working conditions, welfare, remuneration, and strategies to attract and retain preschool professionals. The key to quality preschool education are a good curriculum and good preschool teachers. In February this year, I launched the Refresh Kindergarten Curriculum Framework, or the KCF, as part of MOE's Comprehensive Kindergarten Curriculum. The KCF lays out holistic learning goals that we want children to achieve at the end of K2. These goals include not just literacy and numeracy skills, but also how children relate to themselves and their peers and how they express themselves confidently. MOE firmly believes that preschool education is about teaching children how to learn and helping them discover the joy of learning. The aim of preschool is to teach children good foundational concepts and not to have them learn the entire primary one syllabus before they start P1. I would like, if I may, to show some examples of how these concepts work. Madam Chairperson, with your permission, may I display some slides on the LED screens? Yes, please. In this first slide, you see the first week of kindergarten at play at Tamasic Polytechnic. Here, the children realized that not everyone could see the board from where they were seated, so it led to discussions on how to overcome the problem. They then planned the seating arrangement such that taller children sat behind, and this led to the need to decide who was taller and who was shorter. The children then used different methods to compare their heights, such as standing in front of a mirror together and measuring themselves while lying on the ground, and using strips of paper to compare their body length. They then arranged themselves from tallest to shortest and proposed a new seating plan. Now, this was structured as play, but it allowed the children to learn, because they were learning numeracy concepts and skills, such as comparing and ordering, which are the basis of measurement. They were learning problem solving, and they were learning social skills, such as working with their friends and making decisions while considering the viewpoint of others. At the next slide, also at play at Tamasic, the children had to learn how to relate to each other in a group setting. They were always eager to share their ideas and found it difficult to wait for their turn to speak. So, in this picture, the children watched a video of themselves in class and they identified the inappropriate behavior. They then, if I look at the next slide, they then had a discussion in class on how turn-taking could be better managed and they came up with rules for turn-taking. And by constructing class rules, they took ownership of the rules and learned negotiation, problem solving and how to interact in the group. You may not be able to see it from here, but I'll just tell you some of the rules they came up with. It was, we should listen, we should not play, we should not talk, we should not speak when someone is speaking, we should not interrupt and we should listen to the person who is speaking. Actually, Madam Chairperson, if you think about it, that's very much like the standing orders of Parliament. So we are actually preparing them with foundational concepts for a good future ahead. <laughs> then we turn to the next slide, which is a picture of Ascension Kindergarten. Here you see music and movement activity, where children move around the room with small quick steps or large slow actions, depending on the visual cues in the form of cards with different shapes on them. The children take turns to lead and to control the activity by holding up these cards. Again, although they are playing and having fun, they're indirectly learning the concepts of leading and influencing the behavior of their friends, how to follow instructions, how to control their movements when they take big and small steps, and they're also exploring the elements of music such as tempo. Some parents worry that the learning goals articulated in the kindergarten framework may be too basic and may not adequately prepare children for primary one. They're also concerned that primary schools may have higher expectations than the goals set in the KCF. To, to, to these concerns, I would like to say that MOE developed the learning goals in the KCF with feedback from both the preschool and primary school educators. The KCF reflects alignment of learning goals at the end of K2 and what we expect the children to be able to do and know upon entry to primary one. It establishes a common understanding among educators on how to better support a child's learning in the preschool years and at primary one. MOE has engaged primary school leaders on how to ensure a smooth transition from K2 to formal schooling, 
including the appropriate teaching approaches and pitching of lessons at P1. MOE will continue to engage teachers and key personnel in primary schools to ensure that primary one learning is appropriately paced. And primary one teachers will continue to revisit and reinforce what has been taught and learned in the preschool years. Primary schools will also provide additional support to those children who need more time to attain the K2 learning goals. And we ask for parents' support in this endeavor. The next item, teachers. MOE will continue to invest in raising the quality of teaching in preschool centers. Committed and high quality teachers are at the heart of a good preschool experience. We have raised the minimum qualifications for kindergarten level teachers over the years. The minimum professional qualification is the Diploma in Early Childhood Care and Education Teaching. This is a diploma level qualification offered by polytechnics and private training agencies. The percentage of kindergarten level teachers who have undergone or are undergoing training for this diploma has increased from 58% in 2007 to 85.5% in 2012. Going ahead, our polytechnics will increase the number of places for both full-time and part-time kindergarten level teacher training programs starting from 2014. We also need to attract and retain individuals with the right disposition to nurture and inspire children. This involves recognizing preschool teachers as professionals and providing them with respectable salaries and good career opportunities. To achieve this, MOE has been improving access to professional development opportunities for preschool teachers. Between 2011 and 2012, about 550 preschool educators benefited from government provision of scholarships, teaching awards and bursaries for training and professional development. MOE also provides training opportunities in leadership, curriculum and pedagogy. We also recognize outstanding kindergarten teachers by working closely with professional bodies such as the Association for Early Childhood Educators Singapore to identify and present awards to outstanding kindergarten teachers. Funding is provided for these teachers to attend mentoring courses, overseas conferences and study trips. Ms. Faisal Jamal spoke about environment in the preschool curriculum, and I agree with her that education about the environment should be an important part of preschool education. The refreshed kindergarten curriculum framework includes discovery of the world as one of its key learning areas. This encourages preschool centers to harness the children's natural curiosity towards the world around them and help them learn how to care for the environment. We support teachers in bringing environmental education to the preschool classroom. The Diploma in Early Childhood Care and Education Teaching includes curriculum planning and pedagogies for nurturing children's awareness of the environment. And the kindergarten curriculum framework includes suggestions on how teachers can provide opportunities for children to develop interests in the world around them by bringing them indoors on field trips and neighborhood walks. The environment, including our housing estates, is a natural classroom for our children, but much depends on the imagination of the teachers on how to use these natural classrooms creatively. Many kindergartens have in fact designed programs with MOE support to teach children about care and respect for the environment. MOE's innovation grant has supported 35 kindergarten initiated nature and environment related innovation projects since 2008. And in 2013, MOE is collaborating with NTU on a project designed to help children in 23 kindergartens to learn about nature, coastal and recycling awareness. If I may show a slide. This is the PCF Bonavista making a trip to the beach, not for a picnic, but for a coastal cleanup. And through this outdoor activity, the children learned the consequences of beach litter on the seashore and marine ecosystems. <laughs> 